My name is Andrew Skirka, and I'm a guide and writer and adventurer, and I'm here to answer your questions today. <laughs> black, black licorice, hell yes or hell no? Hell yes. Would you rather explore with a buddy or alone? If I am trying to do a lot of miles and a lot of vertical, definitely alone. If I'm looking to have uh, more fun, uh, more camaraderie, then obviously go with somebody else. Uh, what is the most underrated, underrated piece of gear? Uh, and that would be the thing between your ears, your brain. And if you don't go out there and use your critical thinking skills, uh, you will end up in trouble regardless of all the great gear that you have. Summer or winter, um, I am definitely a summer outdoors person. During the winter, I go into my office, sort of close up shop, and uh, come out in April or May. What's your favorite post-epic meal or treat? Um, I'm very reliable for cheeseburgers or pizza with beer. What can hikers learn from hunters, and what can hunters learn from hikers? So, um, hikers can learn from hunters how to follow animal trails. And in places like Alaska, or really like big wilderness areas up in Montana, or like remote parts of Colorado, knowing how to follow animal trails is critical to being able to travel off trail efficiently. And then, uh, what can hunters learn from hikers? Um, I would say the biggest thing is how to pack efficiently for, uh, for the conditions that they'll be out in, and that way they can hunt in more remote areas where the animals like to hang out. Best guess, how many unread emails are in your inbox right now? Three. <laughs> Would you circumnavigate Alaska again? So while it was a wonderful, amazing trip. Um, if I was gonna invest six months into something, I would go somewhere else or at least do a different route in Alaska. Pancakes or waffles? So I'm actually a savory breakfast person and uh, as far as I'm concerned, like my day has not started until I've had some eggs with cheese. <laughs> so it's very often the case where I go for like a long run in the morning, I come back and I'm like, I finally have breakfast at like two or three o'clock in the afternoon. And my wife will come in from work at five and saying, why does the house smell like eggs? It's because I had breakfast in the afternoon. Um, so uh, name one time that you were really scared in the outdoors. And uh, this incident has kind of has gone viral and it's pretty well known at this point, but there was a, a case years ago, I was up in Alaska and I got charged by a grizzly bear. And by the time I, was, by the time I realized this grizzly bear was charging me, it was so close that I had no option but to just throw my trekking pole at it because I could, didn't even have time to get to my bear spray. So threw my trekking pole at it, started yelling at it, reached for my bear spray at the same time. And when this trekking pole landed right in front of the grizzly bear, the big grizzly bear was like, what is going on? And it took a 90 degree turn and started running away from me as fast as it possibly could. And as it was running it, um, it shit itself. And it, and it was like a 30 <laughs> foot long streak of, of berry shit from this grizzly bear. What the hell kind of trekking pole was it? <laughs> what is the strangest thing a client brought on one of your guided trips? So I had a client once who managed to sneak in a, um, a tongue comb, like a tongue brush. I don't even own a tongue brush like in my, normally, why would this person think it was like something that they absolutely needed to have on a three day backpacking trip? Um, so if, if you could go on a multi-day adventure with one president, dead or alive, who would it be? Um, so I would actually be really interested in going out with uh, Thomas Jefferson and we would go like up into the Louisiana Purchase and just so he could see this like amazing piece of land that he bought. Do you have a favorite place? If so, where? Um, so this sounds really odd for someone who lives in Colorado, but my absolutely favorite place to go backpacking is the High Sierra in California. I just have yet to feel like I've exhausted that area and uh, there are so many areas, so many parts of it that I'd love to go back to and visit a second or third or fourth time. What's your biggest trail etiquette pet peeve? So one is the obvious, which is when people pick up their dog's poop and then, but then leave it in a bag on the side of the trail and 
you know, maybe sometimes they come back and get it. Hopefully, off most of the time they do, but inevitably, some people leave it just by accident or whatnot. So that's a pet peeve. Um, the other one that bothers me, and like I love dogs, but like dogs that just don't have any sense of like trail manners, and these people just let their dogs wander over the trail, and I'm like, you know, trying to run through, and the dog, you know, like I, I can't tell you how many dogs I've like accidentally like tripped over just because they step in my way at the very last minute. How many days in a row could you eat your famous beans and rice with Fritos and cheese? <sighs> a lot. <laughs> um, I mean, hunger is the best seasoning. So if I'm in the back country and I've had like long days after long days, um, any dinner is gonna taste good. Um, and that beans and rice dinner, I've, I've, I bet I've eaten that beans and rice dinner, I don't know, 100 times, 150 times. And every time I finish and I'm like, like one, I want more. And two, it's like, wow, that is such a good meal. <laughs> what is the most common mistake you see people make while backpacking? Um, I think that one big mistake is people um, not beforehand understanding the environmental root conditions that they will likely encounter. So they don't take some time beforehand and understand temperatures, precipitation, water availability, insects, uh, problematic wildlife, um, hazards like avalanches, creek crossings. So they end up kind of just planning for everything because they're not, they haven't really been able to limit uh, what, the, what they'll actually encounter. <laughs> uh, what movie makes you cry? So I'll admit this. So I'm a crier. I'm a terrible, terrible crier. Um, so uh, I will cry during every episode of Queer Eye. Um, I will absolutely cry during a movie like Lars and, Lars and the Real Girl. Um, I, uh, if I watch uh, The Biggest Loser, forget about it. Uh, <laughs> so it's just like, um, yeah, total, total crier. Uh, what is one of your favorite pastimes that might surprise people? I guess maybe the only thing I'd add, it's not necessarily pastime, but like, now I'm definitely more domesticated in my 30s than I was in my 20s, and I've actually taken like a genuine interest in gardening. What's the book that you're reading right now? Um, so right now I'm reading uh, um, Undaunted Courage, which is the story of Lewis and Clark uh, going out on their uh, big exploration of the Louisiana Purchase all the way out to the Pacific Ocean. So your week off starts tomorrow. Uh, where do you go and what do you do? Um, so if I had next week off, it is October, so uh, going big game hunting in Colorado seems like a good option. But the thing that I'm like super jazzed about right now is doing, um, going on these really long uh, adventure runs. So a couple of years ago I put together, a, or sort of formalized this route through the Front Range of Colorado, the Fifth Traverse, and recently I've been trying to run a bunch of segments of it. So usually the, the loops will be about 20, 25 miles, and it'll include like five-ish miles of off-trail travel. It's all like big passes, like 12,000 feet. So that's actually the thing that I would really like to do next week. Um, <laughs> what do you bench? <laughs> uh, I mean, have you, have you seen this? <laughs>